Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. You can also change the quality settings to the uh, change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation, also known as the electron transport chain. Uh, before I begin, please note that the actual oxidative phosphorylation process, the electron transport chain, is not fully understood, and new stuff keeps coming up in the science world. Um, so, yeah, just remember that. So some things might be left blank, but know that this is the overall sort of picture in a way. So we begin here, inside the cell. Here are the two mitochondrial membranes. Here's the cytoplasm, the intermembrane space, and the matrix inside the mitochondria. And so if this were the outer mitochondrial membrane, the other will be the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, the electron um, transport chain consists of four important uh, structural proteins known as the four complexes. Complex one, complex two, complex three, and complex four. Also in the oxidative phosphorylation process, we cannot miss out the one important enzyme um, which creates the ATP, known as ATP synthase, over here. ATP synthase is sometimes known as the complex 5, but for now we'll just call it ATP synthase. Now, the electron transporters, the, com the four complexes, each have names. Complex 1 is known as NADH dehydrogenase. Complex 2, succinate dehydrogenase. Complex 3, cytochrome C oxyreductase and complex 4 is known as cytochrome um, oxidase. And lastly, complex 5 is known mainly as ATP synthase. Okay, now the two important substances to begin the oxidative phosphorylation process are the electron carriers from glycolysis, from the preparatory step, and the Krebs cycle. And the total amount of electron carriers from each of these processes we have are 10 NADHs, and two FADH2s. So 10 NADHs and two FADH2s are the total amount of electron carriers we obtain from glycolysis, the preparatory step, and Krebs cycle. All right, knowing this piece of information, we have to understand what electron transport chain is and what oxidative phosphorylation is. Essentially, what electron transport chain is, is essentially where an electron is being transported through this chain. This chain is complex one, two, three, and four. And so, these electrons, where do they come from? They come from the electron carriers, the 10 NADHs and the 2 FADH2s, which were obtained from glycolysis, preparatory step, and Krebs cycle. So the electrons are obtained from these electron carriers, and then they travel through the electron transport chain, where the electrons will then, their final destination will be oxygen, which will help reduce oxygen to form H2O. So oxygen is known as the final electron acceptor. And then, during this process as well, as when the electrons are moving through this electron transport chain, hydrogen ions are being pumped out. And with these hydrogen ions, ATP is made. So that was just a brief overview. Now let's begin with NADH, the electron carrier NADH. And let's look at only one NADH and its influence and what happens to it and its electrons through oxidative phosphorylation. And we begin with NADH. Uh, through complex 1. Some important structures within complex 1 is a flavin mononucleotide, FMN, and also a series of iron centers, as well as an iron sulfur center, N2 over here. Before we continue with complex 1, another important protein structure which floats in the inner mitochondrial membrane is ubiquinol, ubiquinin, or also known as coenzyme Q10. And it its purpose is to carry electrons as well through these different complexes because it is a mobile protein, whereas the complexes are stationary. So let's go back to complex one, NADH dehydrogenase. Let us follow the electrons and the fate of one NADH plus H molecule, which is an electron carrier. So NADH dehydrogenase will oxidize NADH plus H to form NAD. And through this process, it will obtain two electrons. The two electrons will be firstly um, given to flavin mononucleotide, FMN here, 
and then the two electrons will pass through a series of iron centers like so, where it will stop at the iron sulfur center. <laughs> and next what happens is that the two electrons will create a proton gradient. It will bring in two hydrogen ions from the matrix and then will bind to ubiquinin. And as it binds to ubiquinin, it will reduce ubiquinin to make ubiquinol. And so ubiquinol has two hydrogens. So we write it up as QH2. And also during this process, the electrons, as it travels through, will, will pump up, will pump four hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space like so. Now ubiquinol is essentially carrying the two electrons, but it's not as electrons, it's just as hydrogen. So ubiquinol will travel through the inner mitochondrial membrane with the two electrons, right? And it will travel through, it will not associate with complex two, but it will associate with complex three. Now, let's look at complex three. Complex three has a few important subunits, three important structures within it. One is called cytochrome B, the other is called Reisky iron sulfur proteins, and the other one is called cytochrome C1. The most important structure, however, is cytochrome C, which is a mobile protein in the intermembrane space and is attached to the complex 3. Complex 3, cytochrome C oxyreductase, will essentially oxidize ubiquinol to ubiquinin, and it will essentially steal the two electrons from it and it will pass the two electrons to cytochrome C. So now the cytochrome C has two electrons, let's just say. And also during this process, as the electrons are passing through, four, uh, complex three will, get, will also pump four hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Next, cytochrome C will travel through the intermembrane space and attach to and bind to essentially complex four, the cyto cytochrome uh, oxidase. And it will attach to um, one of the subunits of complex four. Complex four consists of three main subunits, one, two, and three, simple enough. And as it gives the two electrons to complex four, complex four, cytochrome oxidase, will then, with the two electrons, reduce oxygen, half an oxygen, which is essentially one oxygen molecule, with two hydrogen ions, to form one water molecule. And also during this process, cytochrome oxidase, complex four, will pump two hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Now I hope you understand why this is called an electron transport chain, because the electron is transported between all these, um, these complexes, where it will arrive at oxygen finally. And so we say oxygen is the final electron acceptor. And remember, these electrons only came from one NADH. And so now, if we calculate all the protons pumped from one ADH, we have got four from complex one, four, another four hydrogen ions pumped up from complex three, and another two from complex four, giving us a total of 10 hydrogen ions, 10 protons being pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space from through one NADH molecule. And also this creates one um, water from complex four. And so what do we do with these 10 hydrogen ions which are in, in the intermembrane space? Well, it will get fed, we can say, it will go through the ATP synthase, complex five, to produce ATP. So let's have a look at ATP synthase. ATP synthase consists of many, many subunits. Um, it consists mainly of two complexes. It has an F0 complex and an F1. Let's look at the F1. F1 consists of alpha and beta subunits, uh, a gamma subunit and also a epsilon subunit here. And the al alpha and beta subunits is what actually produces the ATP. That's what ADP and organic phosphate binds to. F0 consists of 10 C subunits, an A subunit, two B subunits, and a delta subunit down here. Now, all these different subunits we don't actually have to memorize, we just have to know their functions. So ATP th synthase will make ATP when hydrogen ions pass through this complex. 
and it's actually four hydrogen ions that have to pass through to make one ATP. Now, to make ATP, there are actually many ADPs, adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphates inside the matrix, right? And so when four hydrogen ions pass through the A subunit of F0, this will cause this, the C subunits of the F0 to rotate. When it rotates, it will essentially um, phosphorylate ADP to form ATP. So four hydrogen ions passing through will create one ATP here. Therefore, because we have 10 hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space from one NADH, this means when 10 hydrogen ions pass through the ATP synthase, it will produce a total of 2.5 ATP. Just think about it. So one NADH will finally make 2.5 ATP from 10 hydrogen ions. 